welcome to the CCFR Radio Podcast, your source for news, updates, and stories from the CCFR. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 160 of the CCFR Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Rod Giltak. I'm a little bit under the weather today, but we're going to struggle through. Uh, In this episode, big news from Saskatchewan, the government of Saskatchewan, actually. Also big news for residents of Quebec, as it applies to our contest. Uh, Calgary is breaking records. The city of Calgary is breaking violence records, all-time records. So, you know, great work, Liberals, NDP, and the Bloc. You're nailing it. And uh, we're also going to have a little bit of hunting talk, some interesting things, all that and more in this episode of the CCFR Radio Podcast. But first, a word from our sponsors. A huge thank you goes out to our great friends over at the Saskatchewan Rivers Chapter of Safari Club International. They do a lot of great work over there, including supporting the CCFR and the CCFR Radio Podcast. Check out all their great work at saskriversci.com. That's saskriversci.com. And thank you so much to our great friends over at Vortex Canada. They continue to support the CCFR podcast and the CCFR. Can't say enough about them. Check out all their great products at vortexcanada.net. That's vortexcanada.net. Vortex, the force of optics. Need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud supporter of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter, they have what you need. Plus, free shipping over $250, which includes ammo, or flat rate shipping of $17 under $250. Some conditions apply. Subscribe to their weekly newsletter to get first access to the hottest deals. C. Toms has been a provider of trauma care training to military and police in Canada for nearly two decades. Now, this emergency medical training is being made available to a wider audience through C. Toms online courses. Go to ctomsacademy.com and use promo code CCFR30 to get 30% off. That's ctomsacademy.com. All right, we're back. So um, I'm going to try to make this part of the podcast as short as possible because I have a bunch of things I I have to get done and I'm going to elaborate on that in a a minute. So I had a death in the family and it was, I guess you could say semi-expected, so everything's fine there. Um, But what I'm going to have to do is I have to physically travel to the other side of the actual planet. And those trips are a little bit long. They take a little bit to plan. Um, So I don't have a lot of time and I won't be around for the next podcast. So I'm recording two CCFR radio podcasts at the same time in advance. So I'm recording this on February the 10th. So that's Saturday the 10th. So if you're watching this on the Thursday, it was the previous Saturday. And I'm also recording the next episode today as well. So you'll you'll notice I'll be wearing the same shirt. I don't I have more than one shirt, but I'm doing everything on the same day, and I just I just don't care to change my wardrobe to trick you. So here's uh, here's the deal. So I'm I'm recording this episode a little bit early, so things won't be. You may have had some things happen before the the podcast, and we're not going to cover them because it was too far in the future. And then the next episode won't be like a regular CCFR radio podcast. It's going to be just an opener for me to kind of remind you of this stuff again. And then just a full episode of our television show, CCFR radio on the air that's on, that airs on wild TV. So I don't, I think, I think I aired or, you know, uploaded one of those episodes, one of the episodes of our TV show once, maybe two years ago or something like that. But you're going to get to see a whole show and and sort of the format of what it looks like on TV. Very, It's almost identical. It's just everything's really compressed and we don't have a lot of extra time to talk about the nuances of things or whatever. So it moves quick. But one of the things that um, I do want to draw your attention to in the next episode that you're going to see is I had made a commitment a couple of episodes ago that I was going to go on a hunt. If you are familiar with with my work and maybe have been, you know, watching things that I've been involved in in a while, you know that I'm not a hunter. I've never been hunting in my life, really. And I made a commitment, I've been making a commitment for years, not publicly, but I kept saying, you know, like, I need to, I need to go hunting because that's a skill I don't have. I don't know anything about that stuff. And I made a commitment earlier that I would go and that I had made a decision with Scott Carpenter, the president of the CCFR right now, Um, He's one of the owners of International Shooting Supplies. Um, We made a commitment that I would go uh, hunting for spring bear this year, right? In a few months. And so he hooked me up with some, uh, with an outfitter 
who's going to have a, a new show on Wild TV. And I'm going to do my first hunt with them and we're going to film it for an episode of their TV show. So anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up is it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. So you're going to meet Ashley Stuckless, who's the guy who's going to be taking me hunting in the next episode, which is just, again, just an episode of CCFR Radio on the air from TV. And, uh, and anyway, some other stuff. So that's, that's how it's going to get laid out there. And uh, you will get to see my, my bear hunt sometime. I, I think you'll see it in June because we're going to do the hunt, I think, in May. So anyway, just thought I'd pass that on. That's kind of kind of cool. All right. Uh, the only story I wanted to touch on before I bring Wilson on is apparently in the city of Calgary, they're breaking records for firearm-related violence, like all-time records in the city. Isn't that interesting, right? So I guess the record that has that has gotten broken is of all the homicides in Calgary, which I think are a record high, uh, 57% of them were shootings with firearms, and they've never had that happen before. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, here's a clip. Alberta is calling has definitely had some unintended consequences. And uh, one of the major consequences is, I think, uh, a rise in uh, gang activity. In the past one week, Calgarians have been waking up to news of gun violence in the city almost every day. The offenders are becoming way more brazen. They are out there to uh, send a very strong message to uh, those that oppose them. And uh, in ter now in terms of opposition, these are generally other gangs. Gun violence advocacy groups like the Calgary Taxpayers Association argue that this spike in Calgary shootings is not related to the Alberta is calling campaign and gangs, but a result of lack of enforcement. I believe the problem stems within the city. There, there needs to be harsher punishments. They need to not have a catch and release for, for those that have committed these crimes. The situation is at a crisis level and it needs to be addressed immediately by the mayor and by city council. We all need to work together. Crime prevention is, you know, uh, you know, is not the job of uh, police. Police, they do an amazing job of uh, crime investigation. I think crime prevention, a lot of it has to be driven by the community. And, you know, so the interesting part of all this is, is the Liberals have been in power. They've been in charge for coming up nine years, nine years. And they came right out of the gates attacking gun clubs and sports shooters and to a far lesser degree, hunters, you know, and it's been a full attack on those groups of people exclusively for nine years straight, Bill C-71, uh, Bill C-21, Bill C-21 amendments, and, and I don't know, whatever, 60 of them that got, that went through, not just the two that were withdrawn, and a handgun ban, and a massive long gun prohibition on May 20, um, on, in May 2020, May 1st, 2020, like, and, and, and incredible amounts of rhetoric and division and all this stuff going on for nine years. And violence is going up. Violence has gone up, not down. Violence didn't even stay the same. It's gone up wildly during their time in office. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? All this, all this clamping down on licensed gun owners, this full-on frontal assault on exclusively licensed gun owners. You know, it's, it's really something, right? And violence has gone up. I wonder what the docs for protection from guns have to say about that. I guess the, the evidence isn't com conclusive and overwhelming and indisputable and irrefutable, you know? I guess it's not, right? And the anti-gunners and all the rest of these, these people. Just, I don't know, it's pretty amazing to me. They just keep year after year after year, breaking new records for firearm-related violence while they're destroying clubs and destroying people that haven't done anything to deserve it. I just, I just think that's interesting. So I don't know. I think this is really going to hurt the anti-gunners and all of these narcissists like the Doctors for Protection from Guns, where they're like, oh, the evidence is clear. It's like, well, no, the evidence isn't clear. It doesn't, doesn't matter. You're a hater. You're attacking women. You're a racist. I don't know. I don't think that stuff works anymore. And I don't even. And you know what? Even across the political spectrum, I don't think it really works anymore. People are tired of it. They know that it was a, a red herring from day one, but now they're just so sick of it. And again, at the very end, either something is true or it isn't. Everything that these people have done has resulted in 
more violence. Just kind of interesting, don't you think? Anyway, uh, all right. Well, that's all I had to cover with you. Really appreciate you hanging in there with me. And uh, let's get uh, Wilson on the Skype. All right, via Skype, we've got Tracy Wilson of the CCFR. Wilson! <laughs> oh, is that a man cold I detect? <laughs> it is, man. I got six days to beat this before I got to travel to the other side of the actual planet. Well, I have faith in you. You've beaten worse, so I know you can do it. I, well, I've beaten it so far. So far. So far, so good. Yeah, keep at it. All right, we got lots to cover, so we might as well get started. First thing, good news. Another Canadian province has jumped into the fray with the federal government and their ridiculous behavior. The province of Saskatchewan has decided they are going to intervene on our behalf on our federal court appeal. That's right. So that's breaking news this week out of the Prairie Province. And there's a great quote here from Justice Minister and Attorney General Bronwyn Iyer. And she says, we believe in the merits of this case on administrative and constitutional grounds. The federal ban already includes up to 1,800 variants, will cost billions of dollars, and directly conflicts with sections of the criminal code which state that firearms that can reasonably be used for hunting or sporting purposes cannot be banned. So that's basically what we've been saying. Um, I think uh, I think it's fantastic to have them on. I heard a little rumor there shall be other provinces intervening. So stay tuned for news on that. Yeah, that's really exciting. And the exciting part to me is they're saying exactly the same thing our team said. Yes. Right. Here's another team of of lawyers in the provincial government going, yeah, no, there's no way that the CCFR should have lost in this. So yeah, we're jumping right. in too. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Anyway, because yeah. it's very, you know, just between you and I and everybody watching, it's very easy for us to say, well, you know, we, we, we maintain that we are right or whatever. Like we wouldn't, like, you know, we've said all along, like the other things, we went in on self-defense, we went in on other charter challenges. But the one thing that we shouldn't have lost on at all was the administrative law portion. Right. As I've said, you know, uh, I don't know how many times before. And there's a lot of people agreeing with that. So just, it's very interesting that the judge, uh, judge Kane ruled against us in the first place, but whatever, this is good news. Yeah, it's great. I like seeing them stack up behind us. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah. I mean, what they're doing is wrong and you know, it's good to see that not all governments are just like, uh, what's, you know, how are we doing in polling? Can we destroy these people and stay in power because these people will, will like that or, you know, that's, it's a, it's, yeah, it's uh it's kind of an immoral thing that we're, we're fighting as well. Yeah. Okay. So you just got back from the Safari Club International. I think it was their national convention or something in Nashville. Yeah. The national convention in Nashville, no less. Isn't that, uh, why don't you give us the details of that? Yeah. It's actually like their international convention because Safari, SCI stands for Safari Club International. There was hunters there from around the world. Literally hundreds of thousands of people attended. Um supporters from all across the globe, some of the biggest names in hunting and hunting TV shows and in country music all under one roof. It was an absolute blast. Um, it was a great mix of business and pleasure. Um, I had some meetings with some really important people, Jeremy Clare, he's the litigation counsel um, and international affairs liaison for SCI. And he deals with a lot of international hunting issues and regulations. We had a wonderful conversation about C21 and also a little bit of doom and gloom talk about what could be coming down the pipe with the Canadian Firearms Advisory Committee still looking at a ban on hunting rifles. So very important. Uh, Regina Lennox is also a litigation counsel for SCI. Great girl. We had a wonderful conversation. I attended some women in hunting breakfasts and and networked with women from all across, not just Canada and not even just the United States, but all across the world. So it was really interesting. And then, of course, on the fun side, uh, there was a lot of entertainment that they booked. This is a huge show, like nothing we've got here. So I saw the Jason Aldean concert, Big and Rich. There was a massive awards banquet as well. This was really important. Um, and there's an award called Legislator of the Year. Interestingly enough, Canadian MP Blaine Calkins, who is the chair of the Conservative Hunting and Angling Caucus and Shadow Minister for Hunting, Fishing and Conservation, won that. So congratulations to Blaine Calkins, Legislator of the Year. And yeah, just a wild three days. I big th shout out to Amanda Lynn Mayhew as well from That Hunting Girl because we were uh, roommates in an Airbnb and uh, yeah, she, she'd been there before. So she showed me the ropes, took me around and... 
we did an awful lot. We walked over 15 kilometers a day. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It was a lot. Awesome. It was a lot. Well, mm -hmm. and yeah. So just a fantastic experience and really important networking with our friends in the uh, and partners in the hunting community. Yeah. So. Well, which brings us to the topic of uh, the reason why you went there. Like we're very I mean, I think everybody that's aware of our organization and follows us at any level knows how careful we are with money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when when you were like, OK, well, there's this SCI has invited us onto this thing and they're going to introduce introduce us to all these people and they're going to give us a, a, a place of a minor place of prominence there and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, you said, well, can I go? And I'm like, well, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> if you're going to go to yeah. that, there has to be value for right. our members. Right. Because that's why we exist. We're not we're not one of these huge. I'm not saying that the you know big organizations like the NRA or whatever are corrupt, but I think I think a lot of times you get these organizations that get so big that it just turns into a gig for people and and whatnot. Well, we're not that big. We're we're still a very small organization, certainly compared to all of those. And we need a reason to do that kind of stuff, right? That's why we don't go to Shot Show, because there is no actual value for our fight politically uh by going there. I went I went None. two years when we had a sports shooting show, the first in, in the history of Canadian television, and I was looking for sponsors. And the minute that that show was canceled, which was because of COVID, my God, there was no, no more value for us to go there. So this, no. I think, was a, a really great trip besides SEI, Safari Club International. The different chapters has, have been really, really good to us. At, um, Sask Rivers SEI, right? One of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. I mean, they sponsored this podcast for, I don't know, like, I don't know, four years yeah, or something long like time. that. Yeah. 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 Great people. Really appreciate it. And uh, SEI British Columbia has had me speaking at one of their uh, their banquets and they've just, they've been really good to us. And we're always trying to foster that relationship with the hunting community because now they're under fire. Oh yeah. Uh, they're next. Who could have seen yeah. that coming, right? Gee, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it was fantastic. Shout out as well to Amy Stevens. She's the president of the Ottawa Valley SCI chapter. Uh, she brought me into the women's breakfast, and that was also a really great opportunity to network with uh, women from around the, the world, really. And yeah, it was uh, just really nice to be mentored by some of these great people and uh, made a lot of lasting connections. I was on a business card collection duty for three days. So yeah, we didn't send a huge delegation. I just went by myself. Um, minimal cost to our members, member dollars are dear. And I think uh, all in all, it was absolutely worth it, 100%. Cool, cool. Now, yeah. speaking of that, we've been investing up more of our effort into uh, making inroads into the hunting community because they are they actually ended up with a shot across the bow with the amendments G4 and G46 to, uh, to Bill C-21. And it really kind of jarred a lot of hunting organizations and hunters into thinking like, oh, you know, uh, the the black black rifle and handgun people have been screaming that the sky's falling. It's actually some of this, this is coming this stuff is coming true. Right. So we've uh, we've been reaching out, and one of the organizations that have been really great to us, and I can't thank them enough, is uh, the Wild Sheep Society of British Columbia. They made a donation last year. They've got a couple more donations for us this year. They've they're uh, having us speak at their Penticton. Uh, tr it's a trade show and a conference at the same time. And I was supposed to go there to speak, but I'm having to fly to the other side of the world and you're gonna take my place there. Yeah, that's right, I'm really excited. So I'll be heading to Penticton later this month, February 22nd and 23rd, to meet up with the uh, folks at the Wild Sheep Society of BC. Really excited to go and just network with more hunters and engage in some conversation and sort of game plan how we're going to uh, combat CFAC as long as this government's in power we are at risk so it's um yeah really important opportunity I think yeah and I, I just want to say thanks to uh Kyle Stelter and uh and Mike Southern from the the Wild Sheep Society of British Columbia I really appreciate all the help can't tell you how much mm -hmm. so we're trying to fund ourselves too because we got things to do as well and and you know I would hope that there might be an election coming up Oh, I hope so. Please. That would be nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. We got a bunch of other uh, hunting and outdoor shows coming up as well on the uh, on the list here. We do. The Saskatoon Sports and Leisure Show. I will be, oddly enough, I have to go to Europe and then 
I get back, and I mean, where I'm going is nine hours ahead of us, or ahead of me on the West Coast here. And I get back on the Wednesday at night, like in the, you know, in the late evening, I think about eight o'clock my time. And then I got Thursday to try to recover. No, no, I get back Tuesday. I got Wednesday to try to recover on Thursday. I'm heading to Saskatoon because we made a commitment that we would both be at uh, at this show and I'm going to honor that commitment. But um, if you do end up coming by the booth or whatever, and my eyes, I look like Cookie Monster, my Bring eyes are rolling coffee. around or I'm sleeping on the ground, you'll know why. Yeah. Oh, man. It's just going to be wild. But hey, whatever. This is what we're doing, right? So we're doing it. Yeah, we're going to go to that show um, March 1st and 2nd, March 8th, 9th and 10th. I'll be in St. Hyacinth, Quebec at their outdoor show there. March 14th and 17th, you and I will both be at the Toronto Sportsman Show in Toronto, obviously. Um, but that same weekend, there's also another um, outdoor show in Quebec City. It's a really big one. Our Quebec gang will be there, so make sure you go and see them. And then March 29th and 30th, we'll be at the Calgary Easter Gun Show. So there's a couple of really big shows in Quebec, which is great. Yeah, well, speaking of Quebec, we have really great news to share with everybody, which is... Yes. The province of Quebec, as we found out, actually, I, I found out through Twitter, people are like, you know, this is this has changed in Quebec. You may want to look into it. So basically, as I mentioned in the, in the last episode, you know, there's a reason why basically 100% of like sweepstakes and, and contests and raffles and stuff like that are not open to residents of Quebec was because of the Quebec government putting these ridiculous requirements right. on people that w- want to run fundraisers and stuff. And uh, they apparently they repealed all of those regulations back in October 2023. We had a look into it and they did repeal those, at least the way that we Mm -hmm. read it. So the best day ever contest is now open to all residents of Quebec. So hurry over to firearmrights.ca or ccfr.ca. Enter the contest by making a donation of $25 to the CCFR. You get one free entry. If you make uh, a donation of $100, you get five free entries. Get over there and try to win it. It would be awesome. Fly out of Quebec into Calgary, Alberta, go on all those shopping sprees and shooting guns and eating steak, and it'll just be a blast. Absolutely. So that's that's really great news. And I, f- I forget who tipped me off to that on Twitter, but I was like, oh, is that true? <laughs> so I went over there and it's like, yeah. it is true. It's like, it's almost like we're one country again. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, but, all right. Hey, well, man, that's good news and really great for our Quebec members and supporters because I know it's just such a drag that their government did that to them. So, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really appreciate that. So, all right. We we raced through our list in record time. I think that's probably the shortest segment we've done in a long time. Yeah, I think so, too. But, hey, most of this was nice, positive stuff, which is great. Of course, the House of Commons has resumed as of last week. So who knows what's going to happen next? But yeah, for now, this is some some really good stuff here, and yeah, things are uh, things are trucking along. Yeah, so it it is nice to actually talk and just just talk about like gun shows and events yeah. and people and you know just regular stuff, getting on with our lives. So maybe maybe that's a window into what it'll be like if there's an election anytime soon. Oh please, yeah. yes. All right, well, thanks for the uh, update, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, we'll see you then. All right, that's going to do it for episode 160 of the CCFR Radio Podcast. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate that. Uh, Hanging in there with me while I'm I'm, uh, under the weather and everything. As I said before, the next episode is going to be a generic episode. We'll be wearing the same shirt. I'll still be sick. I haven't been sick for two and a half weeks. Um, It's just that I've recorded this all the same day. The upside to that generic episode that you're going to get next time is that you'll get to see an entire episode of our television show on Wild TV called CCFR Radio on the Air. So kind of cool. You also get to meet the guy that's going to take me hunting for the first time ever in my life. Kind of exciting. Spring bear. That's uh, I'm looking forward to it. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, last thing I want to talk about real quick is the uh, CCFR's Best Day Ever contest. We've heard all about it already, but in case you haven't, here's how it works. Uh, if you are the grand prize winner, you'll be flown all expenses paid from anywhere in Canada to Calgary, Alberta. You'll get a $5,000 shopping spree at the Calgary Shooting Center, and then you'll get to shoot an exotic shooting package in the store, live fire right then and there, which is awesome. And Wilson and I will be there to shoot alongside with you uh, a few rounds as well. Then we'll all go over to the shooting edge. You'll spend another $5,000 in their store and shoot another exotic shooting package, live fire, 
right then and there in the store. They Both these places have indoor ranges. We'll shoot some rounds there with you as well. And we'll go out for dinner, go out for lunch. You'll stay in a nice hotel and be flown home. It'll all be done in a single weekend and we'll ship all of your goodies home to you as well. We'll pay for all that stuff also. So the whole thing shouldn't cost you any more than maybe parking at the airport and some gas for you to get to and from the airport from home, your home airport. So other than that, everything should be taken care of. Anyway, check out all the contest details. The big news obviously is residents of Quebec, you are included now. Thank goodness, right? And congratulations to all you Quebecers out there. You finally got, you, you, you forced your government to stop acting like a bunch of unserious clowns. So, you know, you, you haven't been able to enter these contests for how long? Uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of useless regulation uh, from tyrannical governments, <laughs> but congratulations, you are now welcome into the contest and I'm glad you're all here. So make sure that if you're com from Quebec and you're in hunting forums or whatever, spread around some information about the contest. It ends on March the 10th at midnight Eastern time. So you don't have a lot of time. I'm not going to be around to promote it. Wilson will probably be pushing it around and our social media guys as well. But uh, if you're interested, and of course, uh, how you get entries is if you donate $25 to the CCFR, you get one free entry into the contest. You donate $100, you get five free entries into the contest. And that money goes to funding the projects that we do over at the CCFR. If you're not sure what those projects are, go to ccfr.ca or firearmrights.ca, click Why Join, and start scrolling down that list of all the things that we've done in the nine years, basically the eight and a half years that, that Trudeau has been the Prime Minister of Canada. That's how long the CCFR has existed. That's when we came into came onto the scene. So anyway, you can check that out and see if that uh, if you approve of that and you're interested in helping fund things like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, not the next episode, but the episode after that will be a fresh one, and I'll have lots to tell you at that point. I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. This is another episode of the CCFR Radio Podcast. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.